Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. All right, Randy, um, the first thing is uh, EA Sports, UFC 5. Uh, they just recently added you to the game. How are you feeling about that? Uh, that was dope, bro. That was dope. That was cool. That was uh, that was a, a dream come true, you know, as a as a as a, a gamer, a long a lifelong gamer since I was a little youth, you know. So yeah, that was that was dope. I was super excited about that. It got it got old quick though. I didn't realize how old it'll get quick, but that shit was dope initially. For sure, man. Um, what what was the first sports game you played as a kid, like video game? Probably FIFA for my brothers and FIFA. And then um, I'm one prominent, like, in my teens. We played a lot of FIFA coming up, just, and we played a lot of soccer and shit outside. But, like, prominent one that I remember that I used to play a lot, like, just, like, in my teens, maybe uh, Fight Night Round 3. Boxing. Fight Night Round 3. That was good. Man, it, it's a trip that you could be playing a video game as a kid, and and then now you're in a video game. That's that's just something that you probably never fathomed. <laughs> And it's incredible. Listen, I'm I'm not even supposed to be here, bro. So I'm just I'm 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 super excited. I'm definitely not supposed to be here. So I'm just I'm grateful. And I'm it was it was definitely a dream come true. You know? So that just shows like yo, keep keep at it. Don't give up on your dreams. Keep grinding. Anything is possible because where I'm coming from, hell no, I didn't think I was gonna be in a video game. But the opportunity was there, and now here I am today, just based off of the hard work put in. You know, so I just keep on grinding possibilities are endless definitely um i feel like the the next step for you would be getting the custom shorts made like <laughs> that's yeah that would be yeah, dope. right i would be dope i would be dope i don't know what kind of what color i would get though i don't know what how would i do that like what what customizations would i even do where do i even begin i've never thought about that until I mentioned it. well it, like you said opportunities will come and you'll get your opportunity to, to I, think and, and and you know make it materialize uh, i feel like Something to Jamaica, you know, but you got to, like, it's, it's just, you just have to. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do that. But my, sh it's funny, my shorts is already, you know what I mean? Green, black, gold. That's the flag right there, you know? So my, 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 my shorts is already that. So when I think of customization, how, how much further could it go? It would have to be something completely different from, you know, the island. New York, you know what I mean? New York, what, what can you do? Um. Let's, we'll do that yeah, too. Yeah, um, it, will, it will come, man. It will come. Um, now, the news was like a few months back, Randy Brown versus Carlos Pratis, UFC 309 and MSG. Perfect location, a great opponent. What happened to that fight? Um, basically, what happened to that fight is I got the contract. Well, first of all, I didn't even get the contract. I got the word from my management, from Sean, saying, hey, this is the fight. This is the date, December 7th, Randy Brown versus Carlos Pratis. What do you think? I immediately accepted, right? And here's the thing. Remember, I called him out. So I see all the videos today going out saying that, you know, he I ran from the fight and people kind of all type of bullshit. And how, you know, that I posted some shit about December 7th. I'm like, bro, I seen you posting November 16th in your story, posters of me and you. That was never presented to me at no point ever. That was never presented to me. What was presented to me was December 7th. A few weeks after that. So I'm like, a few weeks after. Was it three weeks after November uh, 16 or whatever? So I agreed right away to that, you know, but, uh, and, I, and when I seen him posting that, I was like, well, that's not, that's not the case. So I posted the poster of December 7th. And then all of a sudden he's commenting on it. His peoples are coming and they're saying that, you know, December, November, I want to come to New York and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, that's not what the UFC offered me. New York was never on the table for me. I've never had that conversation. They never came back and said, hey, you want to fight in New York? I never had that conversation. So I don't know what happened there, but I want that fight. I wanted that fight at the time. All of a sudden, I see they gave uh, Neil Magny, gave him Neil Magny, and I'm like, all right, well, that's strange. Notice how I kept my date. My date didn't change. That's been the date I've been saying from the jump. I just got a new opponent. Interesting, man. Interesting stuff. Um, you know, after your last fight, you know, you wanted a fight against like Jeff Neal or, or Colby Covington. Mm -hmm. Why are they not giving you like a high value contender? You know, I mean, nothing against Brian Battle, but you know, I mean, there's names out there. There's veterans out there that you can fight that are high up. I think they want to, and I think they've tried, you know, and there, there's guys that 
they've been worked on, you know, matchmakers came back and you know, they've just let me know, like, it was not easy matching me. Guys are just not quick. And, you know, contrary to popular belief, these dudes, they're not quick to fight me. You know, it's not like I'm, a, I'm an interesting puzzle for a lot of these guys to solve is no matter what anybody wants to say. But, um, you know, if you got an opportunity, as far as Jeff Neal, you got an opportunity to fight um, a former world champion coming up from lightweight on a three fight losing streak or Randy Brown. Who are you going to fight? I'm going to fight RDA. Yeah, of course. All right. And what happened in that fight? RDA blew his knee out and didn't even get touched and blew his knee out because he's over the hill. You know, that's just the game, bro. So um, he chose wisely. That's all. Yeah, there's, you know, there's that going on. You know, a lot of fighters will tell you, like, it's not as simple as, as you think it is. Like, you just get sent a name and then the guy has to say yes. It's There's politics deep. In the there's, a, there's a lot behind it, man. And I do deserve a rank. And I, I had the option to wait. So it's not even on just them. I had the option to wait, but that's just not what I do. That's just not me. I need to be active. I like to get, I like to get paid. I like to get out there, and I like to stay fresh in the fans' minds. I like to continuously develop my skill set and show it. So, another young contender. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Run him. Let's see. Let's see. Definitely. Um, you know, like you said, next uh, up and comer, Brian Battle. What are your thoughts on him and, and the fighting style that he has? A uh, tremendous athlete. Uh, adorable. Um. Lots of pressure, weaponizes cardio. But it's nothing that I've never seen before. I've seen a guy like this over and over and over, you know, throughout my career. Um, he's tough and he's going to bring the fight. I love that. I just think that styles make fights. Certain shots that you take with other people, those opportunities aren't going to be there for me. You're not just going to be able to just eat those clean like that with me. So, um, see what happens. I think it's a great fight. I think he's a great athlete. I think... Um, He's developed, you know, nicely. You know, he's been brought along nicely from Pooh Bear to the Butcher, you know. And um, it's, been, it's been cool watching his development. And I, I definitely see the improvements. But, um, you know, this will be another test for him. And uh, a test that, unfortunately, he will not pass. You know, when you watch a, a lot of his fights, you know, it's, he, has, he has finishes, you know what I mean? And I feel like his pressure is probably his most valuable commodity. Do you feel that way? Absolutely. Pressure bust pipes. Yeah. He, does, he does a good job of overwhelming and exhausting people. You know, and, you know, a lot of fighters need space to work. I'm one of those fighters. I like space. I don't need it, but I like it, you know, and, and that's where I do my best work. And his job is to come in and try to crowd me and take away that space. And, you know, let's see. Let's see if he can do that. Your last fight against uh, Zaleski, man. What, what do you think made him so difficult to put away? Not so difficult, but difficult to put away. Zaleski, man, is this adorable vet, um, crafty. He knew where to, where to go. And um, at times, he, that second round, he kind of stole that second round from just holding on to me. So I didn't really get a lot of chance to kind of um, get off anything there. And then the third round, I had to be cautious of not ending up in that position again. So it forced the fight to be a little slower. Um, and durability, he was able to take some big shots from me, he ate some big knees and was still there, you know. Um, it's his craftiness, man. That dude has is, is been around. At one point, I believe he was in the top 10 at one point. You know, he's um, he's just been around. And he's someone that's easily underestimated. But that guy that guy is definitely a crafty dude. Bit much respect to him. Yeah, definitely. But he stuck around in that fight longer than I wanted him to. But I had to be smart. Yeah, yeah. He's been around. Like you said, he was in the top 10. You know what I mean? He was like... He was a guy that people are like looking at as like making a run at the title as well a few years back. So, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, Usman told me that. Usman told me that directly. He was like, "Yeah, well, one point I was looking at this dude, man. Like I was watching him because I felt I might have to fight him." You know, so you know he's 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 someone the newer fans don't really know, but he he's been around for a while putting in work. So I, I, that's why I also thought you know you pass a test like that that would definitely a good name to have on your resume yeah um you know back to back good names like you know muslim sadikov is a huge name as well you know like uh, mm -hmm. older guy very dangerous as well you put him away um now training camp for this one you know what i mean do you change anything because it seems like you found like the the perfect mix for yourself right now yeah, we have a beautiful system man we have a beautiful system i have a great team around me you know what i mean a great plethora of guys that i could bounce off of and give me a good push um, yeah, I've, it's been a lot of moving parts from my camps. There's a lot of moving parts. It's not just one simple thing, you know? So like, for instance, I'm at Marquez MMA, 
I'm at Belmore Kickboxing, Budokan Martial Arts. You know, I'm at boxing gyms, Cops and Kids in Brooklyn. I mean, Gym X, I'm running around. He's getting his work um, up at um, uh, South Box. You know, Eric Kelly's the boxing. So I'm, I've got a nice little mix where I'm just mixing it all in. And I, I got a good, little, a good little group of guys that I've built around me to kind of help me push and stay and continue to develop in the direction that I need to. And you could see it in the in in the last couple of fights of like your stance kind of changing a little bit more and like the positioning and like the distance is changing a little bit more. Like there's changes. You can see it in your in your striking. It's not the striking that you had, you know. What I mean, six fights ago, seven fights ago. I'm dangerous, bro. I'm <laughs> I'm dangerous, dog. I've been tell I've been trying to show that, you know, and uh, you know, so and it's showing in my fights. It's just I don't, I just I don't know. It's just going to take more. I just got to keep showing. That's all it is. But, you know, if you know, you know. If you see it, you see what's happening. If, you, if you're paying attention, you see what's going on, you know. And people think that, you know, after you get to a certain point, you start to decline. But I've been, I've been cooking steadily, consistently for years. And I'm still here doing the same thing. And I'm only getting better. I say that every time. But the proof is in the pudding. I show it every time. And this next fight will be no different. Yeah. You know, prolonging your prime. Like, you're 34. You know, years ago, mm. people would say 34 is like the, the cliff, like you're done. But you're 34 mm. and you're like better than ever. Like, why are fighters mm. like prolonging their careers now? Why, why do you think that's happening? Just a better understanding, better uh, technology, better understanding of just sports science. You know what I mean? Taking care of your body. I've invested in myself. You know, I heard LeBron say he invested 1.5 million a year and something like that. And just taking care of himself and eating right and and recovery and all that shit so maybe not on that scale obviously not but still you know i've invested in myself tremendously you know i do well for myself so i i made it a point to you know put some bread into myself and and, and make sure i can prolong that and just be smart and continue to push just as hard as i've been pushing throughout my entire career you know but um we'll see we'll see what happens when i start to hit you know the higher 30s, you know what I mean? But I'm definitely one of those people who's just smart. I, I, I eat right. I don't fuck around. I don't, I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't party. You know what I mean? So I'm fully dedicated to the lifestyle of being a fighter. So that's what it is. Yeah, you know, Pereira's like, what is he, like 37, 38? And he's in his prime himself, you know what I mean? It's insane, yeah. right? Yeah, he, he's a freak, yeah. though. <laughs> He's a freak, and and at them bigger weight classes. So you gotta understand them bigger weight classes. They they don't rely on their speed as much as the welterweights and down. You know what I mean? So being fast at at, at uh in my division is a huge asset that I have. You know what I mean? And I pride myself in being a lot faster than all of them. You know, fast hands, fast feet, good footwork. My jab is probably the best jab in the game. I believe. You know, if you're paying attention, you see what's up. And that's that's really it. All right, man, let's talk about uh, the welterweight division, man. 310, you know, it was supposed to be headlined by uh, Bilal Muhammad and Shafkat. Now Bilal, you know, he has a bone infection. You've seen the pictures, you know what I mean? Bone infections are serious, serious things. What's your reaction to that and, and what's going on now? My reaction to that is, uh, shit, that's unfortunate, you know, especially on this card. You know what I mean, what happens now is uh, either interim title. I see um, Usman you know, making some noise. Potentially, may he might jump in. But you know what? You know, I see it. I think that we should do the same thing. That uh, if you look at the Pereira, what was that? The middleweight or two hundred five? That was two hundred five, right? Where they allowed another contender at number ten to come up. And I think if we're in the top ten, I think that that's a ten. You're in, you're in the range. I think anybody in the, from one to ten should be able to challenge for a title. So I think throw it to, throw it to somebody. Throw it to somebody who's on the board. I say throw it to Brady. Give Sean Brady a shot. And if he declines it because he's not ready, then pass it on to somebody else. You know, I think give the let's 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 shuffle the deck a little bit. You know what I mean? Cause now we're bringing back Usman into the fold. What happens if he becomes the interim champion? What happens is then he fights, he fights uh Bilal, beats Bilal, he's champion again, and then we're it's the same, it's the same group of people again. You know what I mean? That's just how I feel. Yeah, I see what you're saying, you know what I mean? You know, a lot of people argue against that and say, like, well, you know, you remember when uh, Khalil Roundtree fought, like you said, at 205 and he was number eight. They're like, oh, he doesn't deserve it. But, like, mm -hmm. you, I kind of agree with you. If you're in the oh. top ten, that means you're 
best in the world. You're the best. <laughs> You're the best. I don't understand. I never understood that. People don't understand that for say it's so strange. It's like you gotta be one to three. And it's like, bro, how many people in the there's like two percent of MMA fighters to set out to make it to the UFC that even get to the UFC. Right. And then on top of that, it's about how many people per per division, about a hundred and something people per division, right? Then you to become one of fifteen to be considered the best out of those hundred or whatever in your division. And then not only one of fifteen, one to ten, that's a lot of work. You're you're fucking good. You're really, really good. And I think that they should be able to fight each other. Yeah. That's you should be able to challenge for a title. So why true, not? true. Um who who do you think wins? Because it seems like they're leaning towards uh, Usman and, and Shavkat. Who do you think wins that fight? I'm not sure. I, I'll take Usman right now. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't speak on it. I don't know. Yeah. I'd like to see Usman take it. But the thing is with, with uh, I just haven't seen um, this other guy, uh, Shavkat, tested. I know he's a tremendous athlete, 100% finish rate, great fighter. But I just haven't seen him tested. And I would just love to see him in a compromised position to see what he does, you know? And I think Usman could do that. What happens when that happens? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Usman ain't no junk, man. He's still best in the world, dude. Like, I think people overlook him a lot, even though he's proven that he's good. I mean, a couple of days notice against uh, Hamza, and you just saw what Hamza just did. Yeah. So. Insane. Um, these new rules, man, they, they're in effect now. These 12 to 6 elbows, the, the definition of a ground mm -hmm. opponent has changed. How do you think that... These, how do you think these changes will impact fights? I think they'll they'll make a, a big difference. I think we'll see a lot more uh, rear naked choke finishes, a lot more TKOs up against the fence on the uh, when guys in those wrestling positions. Um, I, I like that. I like the I like that it opens up trend, more transitions and people taking their hands off the ground. People are more inclined. To, you're gonna see more guys drop to their knees instead of just hands. The more guys will drop to the knees and when you drop to your knee that opens up more opportunity for the guy that that has you on your hands you know what i mean so uh, i think that's gonna be good i like that one and we've been playing around with it in practice even up to today we're just messing around with some stuff there that i think is gonna be good 12 to 6 i'm not a fan of i would much rather uh being able to knee or kick somebody with their when they're all when they're down to the head i'd much rather be Kicks to a grounded opponent or knee to a grounded opponent, then 12 to 6. I think 12 to 6 is good. But what can you do, man? Um, the UFC gloves, right? There's this conspiracy going around right now that because of the UFC gloves, there's less knockouts. What do you think of this? Because it's kind of true. The statistics show. I disagree. I think it's just co coincidental. I think I think people are just getting better, you know? And that, that's, that's all that is. Because the differences are minuscule. I did a whole video on it on my YouTube channel about the gloves. There are some differences, but they're minuscule. There's another conspiracy tied in with that mm -hmm. as well. I'd like to get your thoughts on is that because USADA's gone, like, dude's kids are better. That's just, I'm just, it's, it, that's what they're saying. This is what the internet is saying. Hey, do, dude's chins are better. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Hey, 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 listen, man. That's a possibility. I don't give a damn. That, you saw a dude that was the other night that fought uh, a Renat on short on like short yeah, notice. Yeah. You and the you and gyms, you train. Yeah. You know what's up. Like look look at that dude. And there's people online that don't really understand. They just say they just talk because they just want to talk. Yeah. Um, but people who have an understanding and know what that what what uh, testosterone looks like, and mm. you know, look at that dude. Look at him. Look at his back. Look at his chest. Like. Yeah. You saw him last year, he had no pimples. Now the dude is covered in pimples. He's in his 30s, bro. We, what were we talking about? That, that dude is sauced. And I'm, I was on Twitter like, yo, look at this fucking juice head, bro. Y'all just got this juice head just here on my TV in front of my face like this. Blatant. <laughs> like, get him out of here. Like, <laughs> and then he won the fight, but then he got robbed. So I was like, all right, hey, that's karma. <laughs> That's karma, bro, for sticking needles in yourself. But yeah, 100%. I know dudes are sauced. Dudes be sauced up. That's just... You saw that it, there's a testing in place, but it's definitely not as good as you saw. 100% not as good as you saw. But what are you going to yeah. do? Yeah, things will get better over time. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, motherfuckers is saucing up a little bit. But that's they've been saucing up, and they still are. That's just how it is. People are going to find ways to work around in any kind of competitive sport. That's what people are going to do. December 7th, man, you back in action. UFC 310, another pay-per-view. 
mm. shit, man. Another opportunity. That's all it is. And I think Brian Battle, like, he's gonna bring it, man. He's not gonna he's not gonna run. Yeah. That's one thing he ain't gonna do. Mm-mm. Ain't no punk. Ain't no punk. He's definitely gonna come and he's gonna fight. And um, those are the guys that I like because they bring the best out of me. You force me to fight. You force me to. Uh, if I could stay and just pick you apart and I'm that much better than you, I'm just going to do that. But if you get in my face and you force me to fight, then we'll see what happens. Good things happen when people fight me like that. So let's see what happens on December 7th.